Hello, welcome to the wedge. <laughs> I'm gonna do that again because I already messed up. The wedge, take three. Hello, and welcome to The Wedge, a video cast for Asian Americans about Asian Americans doing social justice work. My name is Dr. Joyce Del Rosario, and I am an assistant professor at the Pacific School of Religion in Berkeley, California. I'm a second generation Filipino American, born in Los Angeles, raised in Seattle, and I spent over 20 years of my ministry life working with youth in low income and mostly multi-ethnic immigrant communities. I've gone on to get a PhD in intercultural studies and now teach social transformation and practical ministry to soon to be pastors and community leaders of faith. A couple of my other hats at the Pacific School of Religion are, the, are as the Director of Community Engaged Learning and the Director of the Asian Pacific Islander Initiative. And as a seminary that seeks to educate beyond the binaries, Pacific School of Religion is an excellent partner for this video cast series. Inheritance Magazine is also one of our sponsors for this video cast, and we are truly grateful for their partnership and their work that they do in telling stories about faith, heritage, and culture for Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. So why call it The Wedge? Well, the name comes from an article in Inheritance Ma Magazine written by Kenji Kuramitsu called The Model Minority Myth and the wedge between black white America. It's a great piece that highlights how Asian Americans who have been depicted as model minorities have, used, have been used by white America to shame black America. The myth of the model minority depicts Asian Americans as successful people of color. Kuramitsu refers to a New York Times article in 1966 that first coined the term model minority by implicitly saying the playing field is level. The Asians are successful. Why do the Blacks need help? African Americans must somehow be unintelligent and lazy and criminals. We know that's not true, but this is how the term first came about for Asian Americans. It was a way to um, continue with the anti-Black rhetoric that was happening at the time. The Civil Rights Act passed in 1964, but as we know today, that did not mean instant equality for African Americans. One year later, new groups were allowed into the U.S. because of the Immigration and Naturalization Act of 1965 that previously lifted immigration restrictions. In her book, Minor Feelings, Kathy Parkong reminds us that the screening process for these immigrants is, the model, is how the model minority myth began. She says, the U.S. government only allowed the most educated and highly trained Asians in and then took credit for their success. See? Anyone can live the American dream, they'd say about a doctor who was already a doctor coming into the United States. Karamitsu reminds us that the model minority myth was meant to further the efforts of the anti-Black movement by the white supremacist systems that continue to oppress and disempower African Americans to this day. The myth supported white supremacy and anti-Blackness all the while treating us Asian Americans as pawns with the illusion that Asian Americans are somehow better than and somehow maybe even almost white. And if we're honest, some of us believe the myth. It's called internalized colonization. That's something we're going to cover in one of our upcoming episodes. This myth also ignores the Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders who have struggled in poverty and invisibility throughout their entire existence in the US. This myth is also fickle. We can be model minorities one minute and be the Kung Flu in the next. The Asian Pacific Policy and Planning Council has reported over 800 incidents of discrimination and harassment just in the last three months. These are just the self-reported numbers. I have API friends, including myself, who have been yelled at and spit on since COVID-19. Asian Americans have been seen as coronavirus villains during the pandemic as well as invisible in the black-white binary conversations about race that have recently found a surge of interest due to the police killings of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and several others in the past few months. 
And what do we do with the complicity of the police officer and Hmong American to Tao in the case of George Floyd? This will be another topic in one of our upcoming episodes. I'm telling you, you're not going to want to miss any of these interviews. We're covering a lot of great topics. This video cast um, is going to be a short format cast. I also chose video over podcast because I want you to see our faces. I want you to see that Asian Americans is a very broad term and we come from a wide variety of countries and ethnicities. We are not a monolith. We come in all colors and sizes and looks. I want to celebrate that on video. The video cast will also be short because no matter how much time we spend, we will not be able to cover all the nuances and complexities of each topic. Each video is meant to introduce you to my amazing guests in the hopes that you will further follow their work in their organizations, their blogs, their books, and the other resources that they put out. It's the beginning of a conversation that we've never had, not the comprehensive explanation of everything about being Asian American. You'll notice I have a wide variety of Asian Americans as guests. As a Filipina, I often feel that I'm left out of Asian American conversations because even though Filipino Americans are the second largest Asian American group in the United States, the media and resources still lean towards people of East Asian descent. So the video cast will highlight my beautiful brown skin each week, as well as the beautiful skin tones of my varied guests. As a Christian and a seminary professor, you'll find that many of my guests are also faith-based. This will not be the focus of our conversations, but I did want to name that, that I am coming from a particular community of Asian Americans in this work. And finally, this first season is completely dedicated to Asian Americans and the Black Lives Matter movement. I wanna highlight and introduce to you wonderful friends who have been doing innovative and sustained social transformation in their community and in solidarity with Black Lives. If we survive to a second season, I'm hoping that we can cover issues of immigration and our connections with brown lives as well. My hope for this video cast is that it inspires you to dig deeper into your own identity and your own communities, as well as look for ways you can stand in solidarity with our black siblings. I believe that in order to have a good conversation about race, we need to understand who we are and our social locations. I hope that you feel the celebration of who we are as Asian Americans, and I hope that you enjoy the topics and the stories that we talk about.